The media query that controls the style sheet for tablets sets the minimum width at 401 pixels and the maximum width at 768 pixels. That's a considerable range, which is likely to cause problems with some devices. For a start, the navigation menu has a fixed width of 660 pixels, so it needs to be adjusted for devices that have smaller screens. Rather than create yet another style sheet, I'm going to use at media rules in combination with media queries inside the tablet style sheet. So let's switch to the tablet style sheet and go down to the bottom and then create the at media rule. and combine it with a media query for screen and min width four oh one pixels and max width six hundred and eighty pixels. Now, everything in an at media rule needs to go between a pair of curly braces. So I'm going to put the both braces in to start off with, otherwise I'm likely to forget the closing one and then nothing will work. The menu items are each 132 pixels wide, so I'm going to give the nav unordered list a fixed width of 396 pixels, which will give room for three menu items side by side. I also need to give the menu a height because you need to be able to push down the material which is following because each of the menu items is floating so otherwise the material underneath will float up as well. So the height will be 75 pixels. Now I need to give each of the menu items a little bit of margin at the bottom to keep the two rows apart. Now this is the important part of it. What I need to do is to get the fourth item and give it a large left margin. The way in which I'm going to do that is to use the nth child pseudo class. So nav li nth child four. That will affect the fourth menu item and the margin left will be 66 pixels. Why 66? Well, that's half the width of a menu item. So let's see how that affects live view. At the moment, the document window is 733 pixels wide, so let's narrow it. And you can see that the navigation menu is now in two rows and very neatly aligned because We've got a fixed width and auto margins on both sides. And as it continues to decrease in size, it remains in the center. So that's going to look pretty good at any smaller width than 680 pixels. Of course, it's made a mess of the hero div. Our image is truncated and the content is in a very narrow column there. So I think that the answer to that is actually for smaller screens to get rid of this background image and just to have the text. So let's go into the style sheet again and it's a hero div. And I'm going to make its width 87%. Set background image to none. And give it a five pixel margin on the top and bottom, but set the sides to auto. And 
In the original rule for the tablets, I created a minimum height of 279 pixels, which is the height of the image. But if the image is not going to be there, I need to cancel that min height property. And the way in which you cancel min height is to set it to zero. And then we just need to fix the paragraph inside the hero div. Change padding right to zero. Refresh live view. And you can see that the background image has now disappeared. We've just got the text and it all fits in rather neatly there. But if we widen the window, We've now gone beyond 680 pixels, we're at 697. That background image comes back, so the media queries and the at media rule are working very nicely together.